ready. Hey internet, I'm Chaz. And I'm Dan. Welcome to Wine Series Business, episode 265. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the break for some written notes from yeah. Irene. Thanks for those of you who liked and shared those. Uh, we had a good time putting that together. Oh, it was right an amazing tasting, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so uh, today we're here to talk about some Colorado wines. We did that a little while ago in episode 232. Yeah, I brought some back with me from Colorado the last time. So. Uh, no, I was, that was the first one, right? Yeah, and he sent us one, yeah. their high-end range samples. Yeah. Those and, are good. Uh, and I checked out uh, Berserker Day for those of you. If you're watching this show and not on Wine Berserkers, that doesn't make any sense, I think. So So head over to Wine Berserkers, sign up, join the forum. They run a sale, big sale once a year where people can cut deals to other people that are on the forum. Mm -hmm. So that's how I came across this. Uh, Jay Christensen put up a deal where I think free shipping on, on this uh, 4710 series. This is their entry level bottling. Um, last time when we tasted their stuff, he sent us some of the higher end uh, Animoy wines and, and like single variety wines. And these are kind of blends that are released really quickly um, and, and priced at 1313 and uh, was it 15 or 16 or something like that. So, nice, you know, really reasonably priced. Yeah. So, this is the, the Canyon Wind 4710. Uh, 2013 white blend. It's 44% uh, Pinot Gris, 36% Sauvignon Blanc, and 20% Chardonnay. Cool stuff. Yeah. And they said 4710 because that's the elevation of the vineyard right. that they're working with, which is pretty crazy. Mm. It smells like white wine. I think the Sauvignon Blanc's coming out a little more in the nose here. Yeah, definitely. The Sauvignon Blanc sticks out. First a little more foremost. like young citrus. And you see sort of like oranges, maybe, like yeah. a little bit of orange fruit, a little bit of lime fruit. Um, there's a little little hint of like maybe that grassiness. You lemon grass, with, I think. With, but, with yeah. uh, Sauvignon Blanc, and that's sort of like what, what sticks out, uh, or makes me think Sauvignon Blanc the most immediately. Is Pinot Blanc part of that too? Pinot Gris, okay. Yeah, Gris. I mean, there's some of those sort of Gris flavors in there, right? Like the lemony, the sort of lemon citrus, lime citrus. Yeah, a little bit um, of white floral thing in the background. Uh, but it smells nice. Pretty straightforward and yeah. definitely just kind of on par with what you'd expect at this price point. Hmm. Sits on the palate more like a Gris than a, than a Sauvignon Blanc. Big I time, think yeah. there's definitely a little more of that fullness, a little bit of that kind of like spicy edging towards bitter flavor kind of on the front of the palate. Um, that reminds me a lot of like Pinot Gris. Getting a little bit of the Sauvignon Blanc in the back end, I'm getting a little more of that citrus there. Right. No, uh, but the yeah, the Pinot Gris definitely shows more, mostly in the forefront. Like it's uh, the lemon citrus, the lime citrus. Like even like you suck in a little bit of like the the, the le like lemon zest. Yeah, right. Sure. A little bit of the white, like white part of the lemon, um, and then yeah, the the acid is kind of, kind of acid's in a nice place actually. Right. Totally. Like it's 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 a uh, it's a nice like good good acid in the wine. Um, Sauvignon Blanc, yeah, is sort of there in the finish, but uh, overall nice. Yeah. Um... I think I think really straightforward, right? Like not a lot of depth or complexity, but again at this price point, mm -hmm. um, I, I think it really delivers kind of what you're looking for. It's refreshing. Yeah, the acidity is in a nice place. Yeah, the fruit is there without being overwhelming. Um, I think a little bit of that that bitterness like I was talking about from the Pinot Gris is probably even good. It keeps it yeah. from being a little too simple. Um, you know, adds, adds a little bit of complexity to it, and, and you know, you could easily drink this. You could share it with a lot of people. I think anybody that likes you know likes wine, this is something you casually drink on a out nice and bright, so. Yeah, this is like a really nice, refreshing summer wine. Um, lo a lot of strong citrus components, like a little bit of grapefruitiness to me now that I'm tasting a little bit. Like, sure. Um, but but really easy to drink, sort of like an 84 point, 85 point wine. Sure. Um, 85 points, I'd say, because it's it's right on the edge of very good. Like it's a, it, at, the, at the price point, especially, it's a it's a solid bottle. Yeah, wine. The price point definitely. Um, yeah. 86 for me, um, a, a little bit up. I think I think it's enjoyable. I would enjoy. Yeah. I will, I will enjoy drinking more of it tonight. So, um, next up is the rosé. Does it say what it's a rosé of? It doesn't. No. Rosé wine. So. 2014. Who knows? Yeah, real fresh. Um. I guess that makes sense, though. We're starting to enter into rosé season yeah. with the uh, spring weather we've been having. Like the virtually no winter, right? Like it's sort of been rosé season since the very beginning right. of the year. Um, so well, yeah. the ones have been coming out, right? Yeah. It's true. So. Um, yeah, wish we had no more information about this, but we don't. I'm, yeah, sure, we'll, I'm right. sure we'll probably hear from the winemaker, so we'd it's love true. to hear what's yeah, this. Throw a comment in, let us know, maybe maybe I'll be a little less lazy and look it up online before we post this. <laughs> well, um, it was so nice, the other two are like very conveniently placed, right? <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah, of information yeah. on the label, it's good, right. so. 
You guys love watching us read. That's good television, right? Right. A lot, a lot of us staring at the bottle, yeah, back yeah. of wine bottles, going, "What are we drinking?" A lot of watermelon showing mm -hmm. up here. Uh, really, really pleasant, enjoyable, like mm -hmm. kind of distinctly rosé nose, I think. Right. They're pretty light, light aromas. Like this isn't jumping out of the glass. No. But uh, but there is good sense of like good fruit flavors there. There's like watermelons, a little bit of maybe cherry juice. Yeah, slightly. a little bit of cherry, totally. Um, Man, it smells, yeah, it just smells nice. It reminds me of Pinot Noir Rosés, really, if you forced me to make a oh, guess, yeah, right? Yeah. I, mean, I guess that's kind of what we do on this show. Yeah, if, if I had to guess, I'd say it's Pinot Noir. Based on the nose, I, I think, kind of like academically, or since I know they make so many different other rosés, it's unlikely that that's what this is, but, mm -hmm. uh, but I'd believe yeah. it based on the nose. It smells good. I wouldn't believe it tastes on the palate, though, based on the palate, though. It doesn't taste like a Pinot Noir Rosé. I'm with you on that. What I'm thinking is Syrah, right? They make a couple high-end Syrahs, some darker right. red stuff. This is nice. It reminds me sort of like, maybe it's like a Cab Cabernet Sauvignon or a Cab Franc sort of rosé. Could be. Like it's got a little yeah. bit of that sort of, um, it's not green pepper, but it's like there's like a, a, a sort of like a green sort of flavor, like a, good, a good green, like a yeah. green, maybe it's like a green bell pepper or, or something. Like a Cab just Franc, a, sure. just a hint yeah. of it in the finish. Hmm. Um, but the predominant flavors in the forefront mm -hmm. are like sort of watermelon, um, again a little bit of like light cherries, maybe a little like red strawberries or something. Like there's, it's kind of uh, yeah. Yeah, just a little earthy character. There's too. A little earthy character in the finish, yeah. So. Um, which adds some really nice complexity. I think I think it goes well. Um, the acidity is I think on the lighter side of what we experience with rosés around here. Uh -huh. Um, it's not quite as crisp as I think a lot of people really, really are even starting to drive for that in Oregon. Like really high acid. Yeah, uh, but but I feel yeah. like but 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 this isn't uh, this isn't like soft either. Like the acidity is still in a good spot. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And with the light flavors, I think it, it works well. Together. Yeah, it pairs really it's well. Refreshing. Another like killer summer wine got good like a good refreshing characteristic to it. The acids again in a decent place. Yeah. Um, and the flavors are really delicious. Yeah. So man, at, at thirteen bucks. Man, yeah, no, this is a bucks solid rosé at 13 bucks. So yeah. those of you in Colorado can probably even get it for less. Yeah. Or if you're a club member or something like that, you, you totally should. I found this stuff like up in the mountains. So, I mean, yeah. I'm sure this is probably all around Colorado if I was able to find it in Netterville or Netter Netherland. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Cool wine. Check it out. Uh, 80, 86 ish points. Okay, me. yeah. I'll, I like I'll, this one quite a bit better. It's, yeah. A little, just a little hint of complexity, like what we're like kind of struggling for in the finish. I think that's fun to think about, and and, and the rest of the wine is in a really nice place and really easy to drink. So yeah, I'll, I'll go 88. I think it's got enough complexity to, to make it a little more interesting. Um, the flavors are really enjoyable at that that at that price. It's it's fantastic, fantastic rosé. So mm -hmm. check it out. Yes. Yeah. Wow, this got pretty color. Yeah. So the last wine we're doing here, this is a, basically a Bordeaux blend. It's the 4710 uh, Kenyan win 2013. It's 74% Cabernet Sauvignon, 14% Merlot, and 12% Petit Verdot. So nice, nice big pour to <laughs> all over the table to finish up the show. <laughs> good. Good job, Chaz. Yeah. Um, Not too dark. You kind of see a little bit of bright red colors through the glass. Yeah, it's, in a, it's really pretty. I, I guess that's a good look at the color of the wine right yeah. there, too. You can kind of see. Yeah. Um, if you're curious, it was back in episode 232 that we did there. Uh, did some of their higher end wines. If you want to go back and check that, I'm sure I'll have a link yeah. below. I'm sure you probably search on uh, Canyon Wind probably on YouTube, right? And like probably get. That, that'll probably do it too. Yeah. Search business, Canyon, yeah. Canyon Wind, yeah, you'll find yeah. our shows. Yeah. yeah. And again, if you guys are watching, watching us on YouTube, if you can hit the thumbs up button down down below the video, really helps us kind of like get bumped up in the uh, the whole wine searches and stuff. Really helps out there. Yeah. So. Really appreciate that. It really actually goes a long way now that I've done a little bit of research about it. So. Yeah, a friend of ours that works in marketing calls it Google juice, right? Like you get <laughs> you get more of the likes, the more shares, like you just get yeah. you just get more love. They want to give attention to you because it, it shows that we're relevant. So help right. help us be relevant. So thank you, but, yeah. but thank you. So all right. The cap saw is definitely sticking out in the forefront on this one. It smells like just a one hundred percent cap next seven yard. I was just thinking that like a, a distinct marker for me with Cab Sauv that I get a lot is, is like kind of like a brambly note. I'm not getting that so much here, so maybe that's more of a California specific thing. Oh. Dark dark fruits are definitely showing. Right. The sort of dark fruit characteristic is the thing that sticks out to me the most, like with this stuff, right? Like it's it's super dark fruit of its uh, 
man, it, it just smells like Cabernet Sauvignon. Like, doesn't, like, right. ca Cab Franc, other stuff, they smell completely different. Cab Sauv smells like Cab Sauv. And this, I don't know, it smells like Cab Sauv to me. Yeah, black currant, a little bit of chocolate. Well, black, smashed black currants yeah. is another one. Like, now that I've eaten a bunch go. of, like, ripe black currants, it smells like ripe black currant. So, yeah, it smells just like ripe black currants, actually. I used to struggle with that descriptor for so long because I hadn't had ripe, like delicious black currants. And then once you have them and you drink yeah. Cabernet Sauvignon afterwards, you're like, holy, like this is it. Like that's totally. exactly what it tastes like. So. Mm. Yeah, and fresh, straightforward, a little bit of tannic structure on the mid-palate. And those flavors, like the, the black currant sort of flavors really hold true on, like, on the palate as well. Like it sort of reminds me of ripe black currants, maybe yeah. like a little bit of cherry juice, a little, a little bit of the cherries again. Like this is definitely a lighter, um, less like definitely a less complex kind of like Cabernet Sauvignon or, or Bordeaux blend. There's less less earthy flavors here. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you'll you'll find like tobacco leaf or like sure. earthy characteristics. I'm not finding a lot of that here. Like there's, some, there's some tannic structure. There's like enough acid to kind of keep up with the fruit, but. Really, the predominant flavors are just fruit. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of black earth in there, I think, and like you can feel the tannins, but it's not a tannic one. Definitely made to be ready to drink, right? This isn't mm -hmm. something that like you feel. You oh yeah, I wouldn't age for, this for a while. Yeah, um, and I, 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 I think that's like, drinking uh, pretty nicely now. Yeah, 15, 16 bucks. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I, I think, like the black currant is dead on. I feel a little mm -hmm. more raspberries, like a little more tangy fruit on the. Mm -hmm. Lighter flavors, kind of on the on the outsides of it, and I really like how the fruit persists. Oh. It's not this super long engaging finish, but it's yeah. also just not like all the front loaded fruit, and then you're kind of dealing with awkward green flavors and tannins, like you often will with Cabernet Sauvignons at this price point. Yeah, this um, is this has got a nice finish, right? Like yeah. There is there's a decent hang time to the amount of like red fruit that kind of lasts on the tongue, and even after like the tannins and the, this acid kind of fall away, like it's still sort of like there, right? And kind of yeah. like I've had some food. This is actually. So we go really well with, with food. Like this is a wine that wouldn't kind of over like go over the top of anything. Like pizza wine, yeah. you know, easy red meat, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, I think I think those are you know, I know there are folks out there that like a little more heft to their Cabernet Sauvignon mm -hmm. would probably have a problem with this. I think a lot of Oregon wine drinkers uh, would probably enjoy this. I think this is this this is in a good spot right now. Again, another one that you could share with a a pretty wide range of people. Right? Agreed. Um, I think there aren't any like extreme characteristics that would make a challenging or polarizing wine uh, pretty friendly. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have, I mean, like my mom is, for instance, one of them. Like she struggles with kind of like high acid or like wines that are like really kind of all over the place as far as complexity. Mm -hmm. Like this is this is a really nice introductory bottle of wine that is delicious. I, yeah. Yeah. Would, would, wouldn't feel wouldn't struggle to share this with anyone. So it's really good. Yeah. Um, so another eighty-six point wine for me. Yep. Totally. Me, me too. And yeah. and honestly, like. It pretty much exactly what I like to find with Cab Sauv at this price point. You know, right. if I open a bottle, it tastes like this. I'm like, that, that's great, right? Yeah, absolutely. I should probably even say that I, I like the rosé a bit more. Like, um, say like 86 points between the two of them, but the rosé is, this was this was a killer, killer little bottle of rosé. Yeah, I guess we were talking about price points. If somebody told me that that was 22 bucks or mm -hmm. whatever, $10 more, I wouldn't I wouldn't second guess you. I feel like it delivers right. at, uh, at, at, I guess, a little higher price point than what, what it's targeting. Agreed, so. yeah. Good. So it's cool to see, um, and 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 thanks to Jay for offering free shipping on these uh, on these cheap wines. It's not it's not a great way for a winery to make a lot of money, right? Right. So we, we really appreciate stuff like that giving us a chance to try it easily. And, yeah. And it's fun to see that working in a less popular wine growing region, that uh, not only are your high end wines nice, that that the entry level stuff um, is also totally enjoyable. So it's also super solid. Yeah. Colorado's cool. turning out some pretty good wines. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Thanks for making it. And um, question of the day is a real easy one here. Just give us more tips on Colorado wine. What 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 ah. what should we check out if we run across it? Or who, is this who the only Colorado producer we've done on the show? Well, we, the stuff you brought back there were a couple. There were a couple producers. different ones, yeah, but those are the only ones. Yeah, and right. some that were interesting to me, but 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 we don't know anything about it. And I'm sure somebody watched, especially especially if any of you folks from out there are kind enough to share it. I bet uh, I bet we can get some really smart tips. Yeah, so. I'd love for some recommendations. So. And thanks again for watching the show. Yeah, really appreciate it. Oh yeah, some personal thanks yeah, yeah. people who interacted with us lately. Hit the like button on Facebook. We appreciate that. Diane Nugent, um, Marike uh, Reesmeyer, I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. Yeah. And and Todd Reeder. 
would be my guest. Thanks, folks. Uh, we hope you we hope you enjoy. Yeah, we're glad you, you found the show. Yeah, we hope you enjoy your scene. Yeah, send us some messages. Send us some comments, and uh, we'll look forward to interacting with you. So yeah, make interesting comments. We'll read them out on the show. We like to talk about this. <laughs> we try to give more love to the people who participate. Thanks so much. See you guys next time. Bye.